everybody, this is John for MTG Nexus coming at you with some more Rakdos Luris Aggro in a modern format. This version is a little bit more aggressive than the uh, Doomwake version that we've been playing the last couple times out that we've run this deck. Uh, there are Kiln Fiends in the main deck, most of the grindy elements are on the sideboard. So that said, this version is a little bit more aggressive after the grind fest that was last time. I want to try a little bit more of an aggressive approach. Hopefully we don't run into five grind fests, uh, as I'm not quite sure that I will be awake enough to get through Jund, De Jund Shadow, two blue control decks, and then Gruul again like we did last time. So, see how long the stream goes, but we are definitely going to get rolling on this league. How this version differs from the last version is we're running Kiln Fiends in the main deck as opposed to the sideboard. There are a full four copies of Manamorphos, so you're a little bit more aggressively slanted trying to get the game over. That said, you still do, still do have some grindy elements with things like Unearth, Cling to Dust, etc. To you know, extract a little bit of value, you have one of the mutagenic growth protector creatures a little bit. But you are a good bit more aggressively slanted in the main deck, and then most of your grinding elements are on the sideboard. Uh, like you have no copies of Fatal Push or anything in the main deck. You have four copies of Thoughts, you just kind of clear the way. Mishra's Ball will cling to dust, a little bit of Cantripping Action, and uh, Seal of Fire, Bolt, and Lava Dart as your primary forms of interaction in the main deck. Sideboard is where all the grindy tools are. You have three copies of Fatal Push for the bigger stuff. Tarmogoyfs, Death Shadows, etc. Uh, Flame Slash to go with your three Fatal Pushes. Uh, three copies of Molten Rain. This is taking from Doom, Wa Doom Wake's list. I'm not sure how I feel about these cards yet. I haven't felt like there's been too many matchups where we want to bring in a three mana LD spell, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, Beyond that, obviously you have the Luris, which is what the deck is built around. You have an Angrost Rampage, which is an interesting one. We'll see how this one plays out. I've seen it pop up in a couple different lists. And then two copies of Kolgon's Command, a card that was in Doomwake's main list. And then two copies of Nihil Spellbomb. Once again, supplements your Graveyard Hate in the main deck in the form of Cling to Dust. And then two copies of Dragon's Claw, as opposed to something like Collective Brutality for the Red Mirrors. Once again, this version appears to be a little bit more aggressively slanted than previous version. So we've played the last couple of times out with the deck, so we'll see how that plays in the matches, and maybe matches will go a little bit faster. Uh, one of my few issues with the Luris decks is the fact that so oftentimes you are in a grind fest, and that's fine, but... You know, sometimes when you're kind of used to being a burn player, it does take a little bit out of you to sit there and grind and grind and grind and grind. So, this deck was... Doom Switch's version of the deck was more akin to a Jun deck than a burn deck. So, a lot of people have asked why I play this version over uh, something like Is It or Mono Red. It's just the fact that it's a grindier uh, card deck type. Uh, Santa has no lands, so it's a mulligan. Uh, Santa has two lands, a couple of bolts, a manamorphos, a Mishra's bobble. Um, so I think between it's between the bobble and the manamorphos. They both dig us a card deeper. I think I think we put back the uh, hmm. Put back the Manamorphos, maybe? I don't know. They all lead to a bigger turn. So this isn't not quite the one I'm sure of here. Besides, if we follow the scry bug, we'll end up drawing one anyway, so. here you're going to do this during the upkeep that way we uh, get a little bit of information about what we're working against cavern of souls so humans or goblins most likely just 
is one of the matchups where we probably prefer to have the grindier elements in our main deck, but... Okay, Eldrazi Tron. Never mind. Okay, well... Here's to no chalice. And hopefully turn three kill. sideboard for this matchup. Probably the Molten Reigns. This is definitely feels like the matchup Molten Reigns for probably Rampage and Klogon's Command. So this feels like a Chalice on one. Um, might still be able to kill them even through this Chalice. White. Problem is, if they have a way to neutralize our board here, we're going to be hard pressed to kill them. What in our main deck can we even cast through this chalice on one? Manamorphoses and Abbots, pretty much, and Mishra's Bobbles. Feels like a Thought Knots here. Sure, we'll put Lurus in our hand. Problem is, if they get Tron next turn, I'm not sure we're going to be able to win through that. Crack with these, have access to five mana. Yeah, without that chalice on two. They needed a dismember or they were dead on three. Okay, don't think that saves them here. Grab the swamp. Mishra's Bobble. So incentivize them to block the Swiss Spear, and then we get to kill them with the Kiln Fiend. So this cling to dust was actually pretty important.
Winning game one against Eldrazi Tron is pretty huge. So the problem with something like Angrass Rampage here is it's not particularly good against a pile of artifacts. Um, I still think these are all the cards we want. Fatal Push. <sighs> like Fatal Push kills Thought Not Seer if we can trigger, which is a thing. I'm not sure. Like, the cling to us seem pretty mediocre here. Yes, they're a cantrip, but I don't think this game is about grinding. Mutagenic growth is an interesting one, but once again, probably shave a lava dart. We shave one molten rain on the draw. Bring in, like, a fatal push or two. Go down and unearth. We'll go down a kiln fiend on the draw. Try it like this. Well. Hands interesting at least. I think we keep it, although the one lander definitely is a gamble. I think we're gonna have to lead on Thought Seas, unfortunately. Ideally we draw a second land and then we can go like Swiss Beer, Bishra's Bobble, Thought Seas in for a bunch of damage but okay you have a map you're not okay land and is a good one. Warping Whale, Matter Shaper. Is that Natural Tron? That is Natural Tron. Power Plant. Take Spatial Contortion. Thought sees you hope the best thing you can drop next turn is a Matter of Shaper, Dismember, and Karn the Great Creator. Take Karn the Great Creator, leave them with the other stuff. Or not. 
you flip Chalice. Okay, chalice is unfortunate, but... So they held on to the, their dismember, which means this Kiln Fiend's getting dismembered. Their hand is currently one unknown and Chalice of the Void. game unfortunately it's one of the problems against playing against like a, a tr natural Tron deck right is the fact that uh, you know strip them of all their payoffs and they still draw a removal spell and uh, back in Guess we keep this hand just because it has the molten rains. Like one of the metamorphosi. This hand might have been a trap, but I can't, don't know that we're really willing this going to five, especially when our opponent keeps seven. Natural Tron, they're not Natural Tron, but they're going to have Tron on three here. We're not applying pressure as we're doing this. So, oh, they just have another tower. Cool. Charles on one, sure.
They have three towers? Seriously? Wow. Can't even make this crap up. Sure. So our only outs at this point are basically the Kologons commands because the end grass rampage. They could just sack the uh, Ballista 2 instead. Magic can be a very tilting game sometimes. Magic can be a very tilting game. The, for those of you that might not have catch what happened, I molten rained two different Urza's towers and my opponent immediately replaced it with a third copy of Urza's Tower. So, so I guess they had the second one from the fact that they still fetched a mine even after we blew up their um, thing, but still kind of frustrating overall. So this is Thought Season, Kiln Fiend, hope we can clear the way kind of hand. Basic Swamp could be a little bit awkward on our combo turn, but, alright, so, one, two, three, Natural Tron, we take Liberated this turn. Okay. 
kill the fiend. Go. Definitely messed up there. Should have cast bolt or something. Yep. Question is, what did they go get? Trinisphere? Yep, that's a thing. through my turn. Yep, leaving the Trinosphere in play. Yeah, it's been a very tilting night so far. Foz, how are you doing? Yeah, definitely not.
Um, just the nature of Tron sometimes. I played at E-Tron the match before this, and my opponent led on tower, power plant with a map, Molten ran the tower, they fetch mine, okay, they have another tower in hand. They play the tower the following turn, blow it up, okay, pass turn. Next turn they play a third tower. So blown up two towers, they still have natural Tron. Never fetched it, just had three naturally. And then uh, this thing, or this game, Thought sees my opponent. They show Oblivion Stone, Karn Liberated, Karn the Great Creator. And then I F6 through my uh, playing my land drop before, which would allow me to kill Karn the Great Creator a turn before. So, just small things leading to other tilting, pretty much. Do that, do that, do that. And Earth can go... Clean the dust can probably go... Like, I know part of it is definitely me being tired after work, but part of it is also just like, oh, I know what happens. It doesn't make it any less frustrating when you see it happen. Uh, this is a four land, no early pressure, no early disruption hand. Don't think I can keep this one. This hand at least has thought season into, Abbott, into potentially molten rain, so we'll keep it. Probably put back Bobble. Ah, so they're on the Tarmogoyf plan, gotcha. I think we take the Tarmogoyf. If we hit a third land drop, we can at least blow up a land with Molten Rain. Don't like playing that without getting value off of it, but we need a threat on the battlefield. Because Tron will eventually assemble Tron. I just don't think Surgical is particularly good.
Like, normally I could beat a Tarmogoyf, but not out of a deck that I'm not expecting to have Tarmogoyf. Do you think this is missequencing on our opponent? I guess it's not missequencing. Yep, allows them to find find mine, and then they can get the other part of Tron. Start metamorphos. I'm honestly kind of dumbfounded that our opponent chose to get aggressive here. I just missed out a point of damage. Hopefully they don't have Thought Not Seer to boot. Karn the Great Creator is annoying, but there's nothing here. I guess they can get like a Tormod's Crypt. But that kind of weakens their own Tarmogoyf too. Trinosphere. Casting the Abbot. Seven, eight, nine. Two, four, five, six. Problem is the enchantment makes it a six, seven. So two, No, I can't. There's no way I can get lethal through the Tarmogoyf because neither of these have haste. I was seeing if I could kill the Tarmogoyf. Evening. Hope you guys are having a good evening. Yeah, it's been more like smack me in the face, Rakdos. Like, me the pilot, not... Yeah, I don't particularly care about that. Fortunately, we have that covered. We're going to turn it into a creature. Okay. Well, Worm Coil Engine is the one we can't beat.
Yeah. Let's exile all the permanents on attack. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not packing infernal, uh, whatchamacallit. This Tarmogoyf playing out of these Tron decks is really annoying. So, Prowess triggers three. Kill the Trinosphere. Shock the worm coil. Seal of fire the worm coil. Seal of fire the worm coil. Shatters them apart. So I can get two things through, but probably dead on the crack back. Is two things enough to do lethal? I don't think so. But destroy shock. It starts here. Triggers. What, four damage on the worm coil? Yep. Okay. So. Get this up to. I think the first lava dart's got to target the Tarmogoyf. Which is kind of counterintuitive, but it serves a purpose. Because once I put the seal of fire back in the graveyard, Tarmogoyf's going to grow to a 6 7. Lava Dart. So I don't think we have lethal here. Currently 5, 8, 9, 10 if I Lava Dart their face. So I think I'm going to ping Karn instead. Because that'll put that to a 6, 5, which will trade with the Goyf. Problem is, we still have to beat Land Ulamog. Which 
is not exactly easy. Let's us to one. And then here comes oh, Karn. Okay, what does Karn grab? Walking Ballista? That was very... Definitely very tilting. I was tilt... I'll get back. I'll explain the tilting story here in a minute, but I'm going to go take a quick walk around the, the room and stretch for a sec. It was a rough game, but there was a lot more going on than just that. So, first match I played against Etron, win game one, lose game two to Chalice. Game three, keep a no threat, mold a six. Um, do have Luris, obviously, so I still have a threat. Double Molten Rain, opponent leaves on tower, map. Plays power plant. Uh, so I blow up tower. Okay, they fetch mine anyway. So obviously they have a second tower. In hand. Uh, blow up the second tower. Opponent proceeds to play the third tower. And then just kind of... So you have the pretty easy keep. And so I'm kind of tilted from that. Uh, get waxed at that point. Um, then game one against Green Tron, I have a, um, Thought Seize, Kiln Fiend, Thought Seize plus Pressure Hand. Thought Seize them on one, see Karn Liberated, uh, This is an interesting place to put us, I guess. Um, I'm going to take a bit of a gamble here. Because I don't think I can afford to play a long game against this particular version of humans. Play out the Kiln Fiend and kind of hope we can clean tile in the house next turn. Then I see nat Natural Tron, uh, Karn, Karn Liberated, Karn the Great Creator. Yeah, I thought you yeah, kind of whatever here. Don't know that that was the wisest move in the world. I guess without uh, these being instants, though, this makes Kiln Fiend considerably worse here.
dealing ourselves a lot of damage this game. Basically, they had three unanswerable cards and... I took two, then they had uh, Karn the Great Creator into um, Trinisphere. I guess this is kind of giving away a lot of information, but so it's kind of obliged to chump block at least one of our creatures this turn. So. Meddling Mage, Reflector Mage, Thalia's Lieutenant. I guess we have to take Meddling Mage here. So do I try to spike the win or just set up with... Uh, Luris. So in the end, it doesn't matter. Now our opponent has access to General Kudro. I presume is their play here? Yep, they're going to reflect our mage. Okay. Yeah, I guess we go in hindsight should have gone for the Luris play. Because now they get to play Thalia's Lieutenant and General and exile everything in our graveyard that matters. Over five. So the last card in hands of Thalga's Lieutenant. I guess I could have cycled the unearth there to try to hit a desperation spike. That said, I don't think they're going to be able to kill us this turn anyway. Let's add another reflector mage. I 
Could certainly be wrong here, though. get to attack this turn so we're taking eight yeah we're dead to exact seas not quite exact seas I suppose but Let's see if it even mattered Slash, bring in the fatal pushes. And, and grass rampage, bring in the Kulgon's commands. Probably down the metamorphosis and the kiln fiends, pretty much. Seems pretty clean. Yeah, I think the turn I decided to go for the win instead of putting Lurus in my hand. I guess it didn't matter because they had uh, Meddling Mage. This hand's a keep. Not the best of hands, but it's a keep. I don't think it's particularly good, honestly. I just, the list I copied happened to have an Ingress Rampage. The problem is, a lot of the decks that you want to kill a specific, especially the artifact, are playing multiple artifacts. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't matchups, it's not a fine card, I'm just simply saying that there are... I just missed a point of damage because I'm going to play Seal of Fire here. So, the only card that punishes me for not playing Seal of Fire is... Kite Sail Freebooter. Is that enough of a reason to give up on Prowess Triggers next turn? I don't think so. Especially against an opponent that mulligan to... 5? The range of hands they had to keep they might just literally be on Vile in one land. And that does look like it might be the case here. Just gonna go to attacks here. I want to see if they have any tricks up their sleeve before I de decide if I'm going to deploy either the Seal of Fire or the uh, Fatal Push this turn. There's nothing that can, they can vial in for one that saves us from a Seal of Fire. So I'm just gonna let this chill and play. This way, if they try to vial in a uh, Noble Hierarch here, we can catch the Hierarch, which is probably more important than the, uh,
Yeah, I probably should have played Blood Crypt Tap last turn. That's definitely a... Warrior Champion's mildly annoying. Could get majorly annoying if they have a... Uh, Lieutenant coming down next turn. Okay. Cling to dust, fatal push. We'll get one deeper here. Problem is their Oriok champion gets to become a 2-2 next turn. Vile up to three. Reflector Mage? So annoying. Still have the ability to lava dart if we need absolute interaction next turn. I'd love to draw Cole Guns Command or an Angrass Rampage. Much as I want to get the for you, friend. Like, you played this game so well until this point. But, um... 
One, two, three. So I can get this up to a five, six. I had to. Some ways I feel bad, and some ways I'm just like, cool. Uh. Alright, so now they get to unload their hand, which is pretty unfortunate. Another Oriok champion. Sure. And the general. Fantas Rider. Okay. Their last card in hand is a Thalia's Lieutenant that we know about. Is, is how do we fight through two Oriok champions with a Thalia's lieutenant in play? Um, start by casting a cling on my land, hoping to hit a Thought Seize here so we can rip that lieutenant out of their hand. Polygon's command would also be perfectly acceptable. That is not the best of cards. It does let us go wide, but they gain a bunch of life off the process, so... Tax this turn. Yep. Problem it all becomes what is their last card? that to a 2-2. Two, two. Attack with everything but Luris.
So three, six, nine. Three, six, nine. Plus four, thirteen, plus four, seventeen. So it wouldn't be quite lethal if I flashed all that back, so sure. Damage happens. So their last card in hand is either a two drop or a land. Okay, so one of them was a land. Thing this turn, just pass the turn. Thanks, Abyssius. Hand just feels too slow. Like we're not doing anything significant until at least turn two, maybe turn three. This hand feels a lot more keepable. It's more important the cling to dust here or the third land drop. I guess we third land drop more than we do the clean dust. Guessing our opponent kept a one lander again. Nope, just had Ancient Ziggurat as their other land. So Thalia. Moriok Champion, sure.
That's a pretty good one. File in nothing on one. Champion, that's kind of obnoxious. Uh. this. third land lined up, or fourth land actually. to have our life total here. See, seems very poor here. Dead over two hits. Well, not the end of the league, but I think I'm going to do a quick wrap up and just kind of take the rest of the night off. Um, so long story short, 
Got a little bit tilted against Etron, but I don't think Etron's Etron's probably a close matchup. Losing to Green Tron with a red deck always sucks, but I think they're adopting more and more things that just focus on red decks, like the Tarmogoyf plan they're on now. I've seen that mentioned on Twitter before, so I shouldn't have been completely caught by surprise. But leave, bringing in Fatal Push is just terrible against Tron if they're not on that build. And then Humans. Humans is a close matchup. Uh, both times we've played against it, uh, it was a long, grindy affair. Uh, you know, you really need Thoughtseize early to take care of Oriok Champion. And obviously it's a terrible top deck late. And obviously we drew it at the wrong time. Um, you know, I think Game 2 showed that this deck does have the ability to grind through... Yeah, it's been doing that a lot, though, lately, Next Surgeon. It really, like, there's been a lot of 3-2s, a lot of 2-3s, uh, some 1-4s in there lately. So, it's not, like, the easiest thing to be constantly losing. And tilting off certainly, like, hurt my chances against Green Tron. Um... So I'm not excusing that. Like, that's something you've got to address as a Magic player is tilt and recognizing it. At least I'm good good at recognizing it quickly enough that I know I'm tilting. And I don't, like, go completely spiral out. But it did probably cost me at least a chance to win game number one versus Green Tron. And then humans, you know, the matchup's close. Like, Oriok Champion's their trump card, and unlike something like, say, Boros Burn, we don't have an out to it with our red-black deck against the protection from red and black creature. We just have to literally overwhelm it with everything we have, like we did in game number two. And, you know, even with a pretty reasonable mull of a six, you know, just them having Oriok Champion copying Oriok Champion, you know, a 2-2 protection from your deck two of them adds up pretty quickly and then that one hit with the Manus Rider you know kind of kept us from uh, potentially stabilizing with Luris but once again Luris can't attack or block through their Oriok Champions so you know that is a weakness of this deck as you are vulnerable to something like Oriok Champion specifically uh yeah it was just one of those nights like I don't even know But, uh, yeah, thanks, pa Foz. Uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. I'm going to take the rest of the night off, probably. Uh, yeah, I think I'm literally just going to get off here and go to bed. <laughs> like, I was going to do some other video work tonight, but it's just like, nah, I'll get up a little bit early before work and work on some of it. So, thanks, everybody, for hanging out tonight. It's been hanging out tonight. Um, sorry, I'm a bit of a downer with the the tilting and such but you know at least i'm real with you guys i don't try to hide it when i'm not in the best of moods so hope everybody has a great evening and i want to thank Foz for hanging out most of the night and everybody else abyssius war dog everybody else that hanged out at different points next surgeon so hope everybody has a great evening this has been john for mtg nexus